In this video, we'll cover five methods used for connecting equipment grounding conductors together in your electrical boxes for a safe and reliable connection that'll last for decades. We'll start out with the two most common methods, then some fairly new options, and finally the one that's not as common, but it's the one that I like the most. Hey guys, John here with Backyard Maine. I've been an electrician for over 40 years, and I've seen ground wires that were connected poorly, not connected at all, or even cut off completely. The circuit will still function without them, so these issues often go undetected, and they can actually be quite dangerous. Without a ground path back to the grounded conductor, fault current can take an alternate path, which could create a fire, shock, or an electrocution hazard. So let's avoid all that and jump right into it. Method number one, wire nuts. Your standard wire nuts are one of the two most common methods used for a couple of good reasons. They're inexpensive, fairly easy to use, and they provide a reliable connection when installed correctly. They offer multiple color-coded options depending on the size and number of conductors being connected. Each option is listed for the size and number of conductors that they're rated to handle. We're most likely already using them if we're installing pigtails or making other connections to our hot and neutral conductors, so why not use them for the grounds as well? Have you ever noticed that most receptacles and some light switches will have the ability to connect multiple hot and neutral wires, but just have one connection point for the grounding wire? This tells us that the manufacturers understand the critical importance of the equipment grounding connection, and they don't want it broken if the device is being removed or replaced. I've been a big fan of the tan twister wire nuts for years, but I really love the new twister ProFlex wire nuts for my deal, especially the red and yellow ones. They have a flexible skirt, the widest wire combination range, and they're rated for up to 1,000 volts. To use a wire nut on ground wires, we'll simply twist the wires together along with a tail to the device. Trim the ends of the wires if they're not even, and then twist on the wire nut in a clockwise rotation. I know that pre-twisting is not required by the manufacturers, but from my experience, it's a best practice and it'll provide a more reliable connection. Okay, on to method number two crimp sleeve connections, or you may hear them called Buchanan's. Crimp sleeves are another very common method used for connecting ground wires together in an electrical box. They provide another very reliable connection that you'll never have to worry about coming loose. They also offer them in multiple sizes, depending on the size and number of wires being crimped. The only downside to crimp sleeves is they're not very easy to remove when making modifications, and they cannot be used a second time. To use them, we'll simply twist our ground wires together with a tail that'll connect to the device. Then slide the crimp sleeve over the wires and use a crimping tool to secure the sleeve. Some electricians will leave one wire long rather than using a separate tail to the device. In either case, we connect them together in the same way. Crimp sleeves are a simple, inexpensive, and reliable method used for connecting ground wires, and they are preferred by many electricians, but there are other ways of doing it, which brings us to method number three, lever connectors. Lever connectors have been popular around the world for a long time. Over the last few years, they're becoming popular in the United States as well. Many people love them for their simplicity, but as an electrician, I was skeptical about their reliability. After extensive testing, I have found them to be quite reliable. They're rated for the full ampacity of the wire being terminated, and they're very convenient if we need to add or remove a wire from the splice. There are several brands that offer these, but I prefer the Ideal Insure lever connectors because the levers snap closed tightly and they're not subject to accidental opening like some of the other brands. These are often used for our hot and neutral wire connections, but they can also offer a very reliable connection for our ground wires as well. You can visually verify that the wires are inserted completely into the connector. They even have test ports to allow us to check our connections if needed. 
To use them, we simply open the levers, insert our ground wires and our tail into the connector, and close the levers. They are a bit more expensive than wire nuts or crimp connectors, but their ease of use can make up for that pretty quickly. And they offer several options depending on the size and number of wires to be connected. The ones I have here are rated for 22 through 10 gauge solid or stranded copper wire. They also offer smaller ones rated for 24 through 12 gauge wire. You guys may have noticed that I use Ideal products in many of my videos, including this one. Well, someone from Ideal noticed that as well, and they reached out and offered to sponsor the channel on an annual basis. This was great news for the channel because I love their products and I was using them anyway. If you're interested, links to everything that I use in the video will be in the shopping bag or linked in the video description down below. Okay, moving on. Method number four, push-in connectors. Push connectors have also become very popular over the last few years. You'll find them on the shelves of your home improvement centers or from online retailers as well. They're commonly used for wiring connections included with light fixtures, but they can also be used for your ground wire connections. These are my least favorite connection option, but they are rated for the full ampacity of the circuit conductors. They're UL listed and code compliant. They can be used with solid or stranded copper wire, but they are much easier to use with solid wire. Like lever connectors, they're quick and easy. We simply push our ground wires into the connector and we're done. They are less expensive than lever connectors and they also offer multiple color coded options depending on your needs. While these are similar to lever connectors in appearance, they actually function in a different way. I think lever connectors offer a better connection. They can be used multiple times on solid or stranded wire without any reduction in their connection integrity. All right, finally moving on to method number five, greeny wire nuts. I really like the greeny wire nuts from Ideal. I've been using them for years and I think this is my preferred method for connecting ground wires. I like that they're green, which we all recognize as a grounding color. They also have this little hole in the top of the wire nut. You can use them just like a regular wire nut with a tail to the device, but there is another way that they can be used as well. If we leave one wire long, maybe four to six inches longer than the others, it can pass through the hole in the wire nut unspliced right to the device. Then we just bend our hook and connect it to the device. I really love these. I'll link the greeny wire nuts and everything else I use today down in the video description. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, you may want to watch this one next where I cover seven things that I never do as an electrician. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.